December meal for faith, family, and food. Today, we'll be making a brunch to celebrate the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe on December 12th. In 1531, the Virgin Mary appeared multiple times to St. Juan Diego, an Aztec convert to Catholicism in, in his native Mexico. Mary spoke to Juan Diego gently as a mother and in his own native tongue. In this apparition, Mary was dressed as Aztec royalty in a blue-green mantle covered with stars. Actually, her entire image is considered to be an Aztec pictograph, meaning that every aspect of her clothing and her demeanor had a meaning and a message which the Aztec people quickly read and understood. On December 12th, in her last appearance, Mary ordered St. Juan Diego to gather roses from the top of a mountain in December, a time of year when roses are not blooming, and bring them to the bishop as proof of her request to have a church built there. When Juan Diego let go his tilma, the miraculous image of Our Lady of Guadalupe appeared imprinted on his tilma, and the bishop was convinced. Since then, the tilma has been venerated by millions of people every year. Although this tilma worn by St. Juan Diego typically only lasts about 30 to 40 years, his original tilma is still on display in Mexico City, hundreds of years later. St. John Paul II called Our Lady of Guadalupe the symbol of life. Why? Because she bears life, Christ himself, in her womb. She brings him to all who will listen to her. As we move through the weeks of Advent, let's be attentive to Mary's call and prepare a place in our hearts for her son, Jesus. So let's pray together. Then Jesus said, when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Um, so my mother's name is Guadalupe, and so um, she's my mom's patron saint. And um, she had this large picture of portrait of Our Lady of Guadalupe in our living room and it was the first thing you saw as you walk into our home. She would always decorate it and um, honor her throughout the, the year and um, we would, she would go to mass with my dad on her feast day and then in El Paso they have um, fiestas and so after the mass they had a fiesta on the church grounds and uh, lots of food, mariachi music and um, games for the families to enjoy. And usually they had um, different kinds of sweets to go with it. In El Paso, it's like pan de dulce, which is um, conchas or champurado. It's a thick Mexican chocolate. Um, I believe it's made with some cornmeal in it, or uh, um, they call it atole, atole, yeah, which is corn. Um, and it's very sweet and heavy and warm. Today we're celebrating the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And I decided to switch things up a little bit and do brunch. So we're gonna start with a Mexican hot chocolate and then a jicama salad, huevos rancheros, guacamole, and churro muffins. Let's get started. We're gonna make the salsa now. I got this recipe from a friend of mine and it is super simple. We're gonna take a can of diced tomatoes and drain it with a can of diced tomatoes with green chilies. Ryan, take them to the sink. Now he's gonna put an onion, red, white, yellow, whatever you have, a couple of cloves of garlic, again, as much as you like, an entire bunch of cilantro. If they're super small at the store, use two. If they're really big, you might only use half, depends on how much you like cilantro. About half a teaspoon of black pepper. A 
teaspoon of salt. Filling is not mandatory. The juice of one lime. We squeezed this earlier for one of the other recipes. No, that's not. That is more than one lime. No. So it's about a tablespoon. You can always taste it and add more if you like, if you want to later. Now he's going to put the lid on that. And he's just going to whirl it until it looks like salsa. And there you go. If you like it a little hotter, you can add a dried chili to it and whirl it all together, or you can add, use a can of extra hot Rotel, but this is the basic salsa. If you forgot to buy cilantro, or you just don't want to go through the hassle, or you don't have a food processor, you can always just buy a jar of... Since I can't seem to make a meal, even brunch without adding vegetables, we're going to make a jicama salad today. Mark is going to throw together uh, shredded jicama. Jicama is pretty hard, so I did this at home in my food processor. That was one large jicama. In this bowl, we have half a red bell pepper, half a yellow bell pepper, and half a green bell pepper, finely diced. Dump it. It called for half a cup of chopped red onion. Again, I just chopped a red bell, a red onion. I ran out of bowls, so I'm using these little cups. Half a cucumber, seeded and chopped. That's enough, dear. That's enough. Half of a navel orange. I used the orange I had in my kitchen. I cut the peel off and then sliced it and cut those into quarters. Then we need half a cup of chopped cilantro. We really like it. Mark's going to chop it. Again, this isn't pre-prepped because it doesn't do well pre-chopped. That small bunch ended up being right at half a cup of chopped cilantro. Dump it in there. A third a cup of lime juice. A pinch of cayenne. Again, our family doesn't care for it that hot, so we're going to use chili powder. A pinch of paprika. And then salt and pepper to taste. And optionally, you can add half an avocado and two tablespoons of olive oil. We're just going to go ahead and add the whole thing. Now gently toss that together. Break up the And there's our jicama salad. Now for something sweet. We're gonna make churro muffins. Tara is gonna put half a cup of sugar yeah. and a quarter cup of melted butter into the bowl. Of course, of course. Really careful. And stir that all together. And while, she's, while she's doing that, I will spray a mini muffin pan. Mini. Yellow sugar. Yep. Now add the half a cup of milk. On it. <laughs> I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla. Of course, of course. Who, who doesn't like vanilla? I don't know anybody who doesn't like vanilla. I know. 
Now carefully stir that together. Oh, careful, careful. All right. Now we're going to add a cup of flour. Hey, I was supposed to do that. I'm sorry, honey. Since my teaspoon is wet, we're going to use a half teaspoon and do a teaspoon of baking powder. I was supposed to. Can I do the next you one? You can do the next one. Yeah. There you go. Now stuck. And a quarter teaspoon of salt. Can I pour in the salt? Sure, you can pour in the salt. Yeah. Yeah. And it's quickly, pink. it's pink today. And stir it just until it's all combined. Like um, dough. Like yeah. dough. All and right. Seven, so eight, we're eight. just combined. Nineteen. Now we're gonna take our or twenty muffin tin. And using two spoons, we're going to half fill each of these tins. Am I doing it right? Just put it on one spoon. Okay. And then push a little bit into the muffin pan. There you go. So now we're going to take our pan over to the oven and put it in a preheated 375 degree oven. All right, it's been about 10 minutes and we're going to pull the churro muffins out. And they look golden brown and delicious. We're going to take them over to our work surface and put them in cinnamon sugar. We've taken the muffins out of the tin and now we're going to dip them in melted butter. Yeah. And put them in cinnamon sugar. And Tara's gonna roll them all around. Flip it over, flip it over. Yeah. Get it completely coated in cinnamon sugar and then take it out of the cinnamon sugar. Yeah. Shake off all the extra and put it on the tray. Yeah. There you go, honey. All right. Here they are. Now we're going to make huevos rancheros, or actually it's my version, so and we're going to turn on our heat and start melting some butter. There we go. And while that's melting, I have a tostada shell that I spread some refried beans on. I just warmed those up out of a can in the microwave. When my butter is melted, I'm going to fry an egg. We're going to add some salt, maybe, nope, some pepper. When the white is solid enough, we're going to flip it over, add some salsa, and some cheese. Let the cheese get melted. Let the rest of the white cook. Get the yolk as solid as you want it. The residual heat in the pan will finish cooking it. And we're going to put it on the tostada. And that's what I call huevos rancheros. As you can see, setting the table for the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe is pretty easy. We've simply placed a statue of Our Lady in the center of an Advent wreath on top of a strip of purple and rose to signify Advent. There's also more information on the Family Faith website about the story of Our Lady of Guadalupe as well as the meaning of her pictograph.
Like the stars on her mantle mirror exactly the constellations that would have been in the night sky during her apparitions. Her hands are folded in prayer, meaning that she herself is not God, but that she points the way to the one who is. Specifically, she points to the cross at her neck. Also, did you know that we have a grotto of Our Lady of Guadalupe here at St. Catherine's? It's located just outside of our day chapel and features a beautiful mosaic image of Our Lady of Guadalupe speaking to a life-size St. Juan Diego. We can just imagine her saying to us those same words she spoke to Juan Diego all those years ago. Do not let your heart be troubled. Nothing should frighten you. Am I not your mother? Am I not here? Our Lady of Guadalupe, pray for us. Until next time, I hope you enjoy this delicious brunch, and we'll see you later. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Bless us, O Lord, and in these thy gifts, which we are about to receive. From thy bounty, through Christ our Lord, amen. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace, amen.